In this video we are going to study the efficiency increase in a scroll compressor, using the vapor injection strategy. To know how it works, we have listed the main characteristics of these systems. 1. The vapor injection installation is recommended for all scroll compressors used in low temperature applications. 2. Vapor injected scroll compressors are equipped with a connection for the operation of the economizer system. 3. In the economizer system, a solenoid valve is used to activate the passage of refrigerant at the condenser outlet with a flow that we will call I. 4. After the solenoid, an expansion valve, TV, is responsible for dosing and lowering the pressure of the refrigerant flow I. 5. Then a heat exchanger that we will call HX, is required to produce some cooling of the capital that we will call M, which comes from the condenser. 6. The subcooling process of the cottle M provides a greater capacity day measured in the system. 7. The evaporated refrigerant I, through the heat exchanger, HX, is injected into the compressors, providing additional cooling at higher compression ratios. 8. This cycle offers the advantages of a higher cooling capacity and a better cop than a conventional cycle. 9. This technology offers the best results at low evaporating temperatures where capacity and efficiency are most needed. 10. The cycle efficiency of the scroll compressor with vapor injection is greater than that of a conventional single-stage scroll compressor, delivering the same capacity because the additional subcooling capacity is achieved with less energy. 11. The cooling effect is achieved by adding steam to the compression process at the intermediate pressure, and at the TVO temperature, which is controlled by the AC-12 expansion device. The size and position of these ports have been optimized to ensure maximum cut, and capacity benefit under typical operating conditions. 13. A single inlet connection on the housing communicates with the injection ports via flexible tubing. 14. This strategy can provide a means to modulate capacity at low thermal loads by cutting off steam injection into the compressor. 15. This type of subcooling is more significant compared to a heat exchanger between the liquid line and the suction line. 16. The yield increases with the pressure ratio, and is therefore better as the evaporation temperature drops. 17. The key point of the system is the saturation temperature of the refrigerant at the injection point. 18. This temperature is a function of the condensation and evaporation pressures being the injection pressure value defined by the compressor manufacturer. 19. This strategy offers reduction of the compressor discharge temperature and the possibility of modulating the compressor capacity with the thermal load. 20. Reduction of pressure loss in the suction line compared to a conventional system for the same thermal load. 21. A 40% decrease in refrigerant flow through the evaporator can be established. This reduces the pressure drop in the suction line by around 60%. 22. When steam injection is integrated into a scroll compressor, the isentropic efficiency is comparable for both stages, enabling high efficiency without the need to install a compressor for the low pressure stage. 23. Additional subcooling of the liquid increases the refrigerant effect in the evaporator, heat absorption capacity per unit mass of refrigerant. In fact, for the same refrigerant load, the mass of refrigerant circulated decreases. 24. Choosing a lower pressure point provides an increase in capacity, while a higher pressure point provides efficiency advantages. 25. Cycling with a scroll compressor with economizers is similar to a two-stage cycle, but is performed with a single compressor. 26. The heat exchangers must be selected according to the nominal working conditions, but considering at the same time an adequate margin that allows the operation of the system in the entire range of expected temperatures. 27. 
The liquid refrigerant piping between the economizer and the evaporator should be insulated and kept as short as possible to minimize heat gain. 28. The steam injection pipe connecting the exchanger to the compressor must be 3 eighths to a half inch in diameter. 29. The heat exchanger thermostatic expansion valve shall be designed for the maximum load, while taking into account the possible operating conditions at part load. 30. A solenoid valve should be installed in the liquid line, which feeds the economizer, in order to prevent migration of the refrigerant liquid to the compressor when the compressor stops. 31. In the case of compressor stations, a solenoid valve must be installed per compressor, in the corresponding steam injection pipe of each of them.